Here's some video footage of that buck I shot this year that I named YouTube. The reason I named him YouTube is I would do Wildlife Wednesdays, and he was the star of the show. He wasn't afraid of the camera. He wasn't afraid of the truck. All the other deer would run, and he'd stand there and look at you. He was two years old. I do have some video footage. I have a ton of footage. I have still shots, videos over the years. You wouldn't believe it, but I just jammed and crammed about eight minutes of it here. Hope you enjoy. two-year-old eight out in a crow plot kind of driving off this spike there was about five does in the plot and then he looked over he saw the spike kind of having all them does for himself and boy he come on running and this is a picture out of my kitchen window that I took also a two-year-old just off the garden right there this would have been in season He's working a scent. That spike come up to him when he's working that uh, scent limb. Now this is the second year in a row that I would clear a spot out about mid-August, mid to late August and plant soybeans in it. What I learned over two years of doing that is it doesn't work. Um, you know, the, the soybeans grow kind of good. I mean, you're not looking for a grain crop, but the deer eat it faster than it can leave out, like say, if it was planted in May. Um, so this year that, that sent me right, right to clover. I planted the Ladino clover. This was the last day I saw this buck, YouTube, October 9th. Uh, October 10th, I finally got the right wind to hunt him. And unbeknownst to me, he had left the farm uh, not to return until November 28th of the same year. I was already tagged out. This was the first four-year-old buck that we'd ever summered on the farm. In fact, it's the first four-year-old buck that I've even seen in the area in the summer. And I knew if I was ever going to... And what I was saying before I was abruptly interrupted, I knew if I was ever going to shoot a four-year-old buck or better in 1B, 
with the you know advent of Sunday hunting, the increased pressure, I think guys are going to be really disappointed in the end result of that. But anyways, I, I digress. I knew this was my year or nothing. In fact, I told Eddie, my brother, a couple other family members, I'm all in on this deer, and I'm totally willing to eat tag soup for him. Number one on the hit list. And the other two are bucks. That buck don't even care. 9.30 in the morning. <whistles> Holy crap. By far the best buck we've ever summered. Hands down, that's YouTube. That's a buck that I've pretty much played cat and mouse with for two years. I can watch him all summer. Come season, it's cat and mouse. Last year I couldn't get him at three and a half because of the wind. I never had the wind right. When I did, that's the very day he left. And he didn't come back for 48 days. But now he's four and a half. He's in the field. It's 930 in the morning. I've never seen a buck at four and a half especially act that way. I've seen yearlings. <clears throat> but he's up and he's eating. He's like, screw you, and that's a wide load. And brow tine's got to be six inches already. It's June 18th. I mean, that dude right there's got six six weeks of growth, steady growth to go, and boy, that's a big-bodied deer. He's missing nothing. That right brow tine is getting a split. Uh, the left brow looks just like a knife. It's like a six inch knife blade sticking up. And uh, man, that's a big deer. I don't know what the camera's catching, but he is a wide load. And then uh, he was a nine point last year. He's got a kicker coming out of the base this year. And he's going to be at least a nine this year. The food was good. He didn't winter hard. And actually one of his sheds uh, the railroad guy stole. It was out in the small field, so. Either way, 2020 begins. Cat and Mouse, part three. Yeah, and here he is, July 18th. Uh, he pretty much was what he was at that point in time. He was always an early sprouter, uh, even at three and a half. He was the first to polish, first to finish, not in that order. Um, but I pretty much figured out I had to architecturally design my entire farm if I was going to get this buck. And he loved his green. He loved clover. Uh, he loved beans, fresh shoots of beans, so... That's, in part, a lot of you viewers saw me make that clover patch, and uh, that's actually what turned out to be his demise was, was the green. And there's a buck. That's a buck. We call him the 10, even though I believe he's an 11. But the cool thing about him, he's a 2-year-old deer. Great genetics. Needs a year. Needs a year. Needs to be 3.5. Um, that's exactly the genetics you want breeding your does uh, so that you always have the 10-point genetics uh there's there's farms and properties that have nothing but aids but you can see the size difference uh between a two-year-old and a four-year-old and that exemplifies it clearly and i don't know if you notice or not but right above uh, youtube's shoulder blades there's a scar there 
and that's when uh, he must have string jumped somebody at two years old and he came in wounded and he never left the farm the entire time he was healing off that wound which was basically you know the rest of the winter and in all spring he never left this farm wisely